Hi again everybody, it's Paul from Stretching Canada here at the clinic, went for a walk outside. It's a beautiful day, walked along the canal down to the studio. It's like a ghost town. There's absolutely nobody on the canal, there's nobody on the streets. I mean, there's a few people, but um, you know, the people that live in this warehouse building are, are, I can see the people that live, actually live here. Um, all the businesses that I know in the building, they're all darkened out and very few people are here. So. I kind of feel privileged to be here, uh, <laughs> even though I'm like it's it's just eerie to be uh, you know walk down the street and there's nobody. Walk along the canal, which is like a well, uh, I think it's actually considered a national park or a provincial park, and there's nobody there. It's, it's just weird. Anyway, I wanted to follow up. Woo, I wanted to follow up <clears throat> yesterday's uh, stretch, which was you know with the biceps and the triceps. But as we're getting, you know, a lot of us are, are getting really restricted or got some emails and uh, private text uh, messages saying, um, <clears throat> I'm getting really restricted, I can't get down into a push-up position and, and these helped. But a lot of us uh, and a lot of the people that on my feed are, uh, are animators, illustrators, artists, uh, as well as manual therapists. And with manual therapy, it, you know, a lot of our, uh, our dexterity uh, it re relies on strength and flexibility and you only notice it after you've been doing it for a couple of years and and when you take a break or go on holiday you realize wow am i really have been suffering for a long time anyway i wanted to follow up with the stretches um, for the wrist and the fingers you know the stretch where we're coming down flexing down and adding one two and one two and there's absolutely nothing wrong with adding a few medial uh, degrees you know, try not to rotate the, the forearm uh, so you're getting more of the, the lateral fibers. And then the opposite way for medial fibers and opening up the retinaculum, being fairly comprehensive of getting into the, the, the muscles and flexors and extensions of the wrist. Um, <clears throat> right, so, and you can do the same thing with, um, you know, the, the closed fist, so it's a bit more concentrated version of, of this. And you know, adding those medial and lateral rotation or deviations, let's call that. So I'll do three over here, maybe three over here, trying to really maintain the, uh, the rigidity of my forearm and then the same to the side. So, you know, then I would go into the fingers, uh, sorry, the finger flexors here. So I'm curling that up and then flexing my wrist, one, two, and then continue on through the fingers uh, and then be really comprehensive about the fingers and sometimes depending on whether I've been drawing a lot or really sort of working uh, with my just the fingertips quite a bit try and, and bearing the weight of someone's head or their or, or you know they're supine on the table and I'm sort of pushing up through the, the fingers uh, and I feel that tiredness in here I might actually just stretch a little bit further down into the fingers so <clears throat> uh, a full protocol would be you know bicep, triceps, maybe something else in the shoulder girdles, get into the uh, supinator, or this will be the pronator, and then the supinator muscles, two, three, and I do five or six of those, and then come down to the finger extensors, wrist extensors, flexors, trying to get right over top of my hand so I'm not just pulling on my fingers, and then, you know, a concentrated version of that, and then I get right into the fingers, do five or six, maybe four or five per finger, work through all of them, and then I could get right into the fingers. So I'm stabilizing here and, and actually just pushing back, stabilizing, stabilizing at the next knuckle. And it works both ways, but it's a little bit more, I mean, I'm, I'm so flexible here now that I, than I have ever been. So um, it's just a matter of becoming, getting to the minutia of each muscle uh, and the minutia of each stretch towards each muscle. Um, <clears throat> Oh, and then, and then, of course, we're getting into the thumbs. So this is the rest of the protocol working here, here, getting into the adductors and the opponents of, of the, the thumb. And then I do the same thing. It's just the same thing, but a bit more concentrated. And this, for me, is really key because, you know, it's part of my grip. And when I lose grip strength, I tend to lose more uh, neurological firing in the rest of my, my arms and neck. And so when I lose grip strength, I tend to um, feel it in the neck or you know the compensation patterns move up um, hey Jonathan 
Brenda. Oh, Brenda, my gosh, it's been so long since I've seen you. And Angie, hi. Um, thumb, right. Oh, yeah. And then we come to this sort of uh, thumb inside the fist and reaching down and stretching here. And you don't actually need to have your, your, your fingers around your thumb. You can do that here, one, two. And again, it's still that half pound of pressure. So I'm, I'm really just doing this. And the, the reason I do this is it's easier to stabilize with my thumb here and pull down one, two, and I feel like I kind of lose it a little bit when my, fi my fingers aren't around my thumb. One, two. So maybe I didn't explain that yesterday, and I'm starting to realize there are a lot of things that I didn't explain, but I'm stabilizing here to, to add that stretch here. So I'm creating a fulcrum. One, two, one, two. Um, so what I wanted to add was, you know, I had this super high tech $1 ball I bought at the dollar store about 10 years ago, and it's just starting to show its wear now. But, you know, it doesn't really, I mean, there are some great tools out there you can get on, on Amazon or, or um, uh, fitness stores that cost 40, 50, 60 bucks. And, and you know, they're, they're great and, and they have sort of elastic -y, grippy things. And I find I can do the same thing with the ball as long as I'm not doing this because I don't really want to get into the fingers. I want to get into the muscles of the, of the, uh, the, the uh, adductors and opponents and hyperthena em eminence. So the, the core strength of my, my finger, uh, my palms and my hands are being affected and not just the grip strength of my fingers. So what I might do is I might start with the, the ball at the fingertips, but instead of gripping like this, I'm sort of squeezing together. It's incredibly hard. And then move down the ball, uh, the thumb and baby finger. So I'm really just squeezing like this, but without doing this grip action. So I'm just sort of squeezing here. And after four or five, I'm really starting to feel the, the burn right through here. And it really helps um, with any kind of buildup. And, and I have experienced this, maybe you have too, you can let me know. But uh, when I forego or get lazy or I just forget or, well, you know, forget, I always remember and then just never do it, so I'm lazy. Um, buildup of, of uh, tightness in the hand. Sometimes those tightnesses can sort of... Uh, uh, crystallize maybe or, or get a little bit um, uh, congested along the tendons and, and there can be like little really acute sharp pains right through the, the, the end of the tendon and, and you get it clicking and then eventually if it's left unattended it can really be painful when you go and grab something or pull something and these tendons just can't keep up and it's painful and you can work that out over time where I usually have somebody else uh, uh, you know somebody with a tool or somebody with better hands than my own or somebody, as long as I trust them, I'll have them work. But I find that to um, avoid, avoid those problems, uh, stretching out and then being individual, and then going and strengthening, and then strengthening, and then strengthening, and then strengthening, uh, helps a lot uh, for avoiding those kinds of pains. And I find um, a couple of years ago, uh, maybe four years ago now, uh, I was writing a chapter on active isolated stretching for uh, Elsevier, and uh, when I finally got into it, when I finally realized what I wanted to write, I had never written that much, or rather, I'd never typed that much. And I typed, and I typed, and I typed, and I would type. It took several months, let's say four months, and in the last month and a half, I was writing every day, you know, before clients, and then coming home and writing after clients, and I would be inspired on the weekends, and I would type. And my hands got so sore, and my wrists got really sore. Of course, I was sitting poorly, and as I got more and more stressed, I would get you know issues in the low back and uh, in the trunk and flexors. But the big problem was here when I didn't take care of myself. There were these little calcifications that built up, and the only way I could get rid of them on my own was to to stretch. And then when I stretched, I would strengthen. You know. Anyway, that's just for the flexors. And what I do for the extensor muscles is really just another high tech 0 0.0001 cent elastic band and, and I can just do that and what I'm trying to do is you know I tend to go through all the, the phases I don't really think it matters um, maybe someone can correct me on this but if, if my wrist is is extended or if it's flexed or extended uh, back if that makes a difference I, I haven't found that it makes a difference so far but I might be wrong so I do you know I'll, I'll, I'll do all the stretches and then I'll go into the ball work and then I'll go straight into to this and really when it's in that sort of flowing protocol, it takes about three minutes to one hand. Sometimes a little less, depending on how lazy I am. Eh, maybe my parents were right, I am lazy. 
Uh, so there's that. And now with the thumb, I tend to sort of, I might just grab this uh, and, and make it a little harder for myself by making a loop around one finger uh, because if I, whoops, if I don't, this is just too easy. So I'm going to make it a, a little harder, put a loop around my finger and then, you know, whoa, two, try and keep it straight. Paulus is brevis, Paulus is longus. And just activate. And you can, you can do circles or up, cross, down, square, 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 square. Anything to sort of activate in the, in the different ranges of motions of the thumb. Um, James, how you doing, mate? Good to see you. <laughs> hey, Dory. So that's a follow-up. Uh, let's see, am I forgetting anything? Probably. But there's lots of time on our hands, so if I forget something, I'll write it down and I'll bring it back tomorrow. Now, let's get on with the show. Let's get on with the uh, things out of my pocket so they don't fall out. Uh, going back to the stretches where we're going to talk about the adductors. We have done hamstrings and glutes and uh, we'll get quads, let's say, tomorrow. But for now, following the protocol, what I want to do is uh, stretch the adductors and, and it's basically this action. And of course, without the strap, you can do that and you're, you're getting an active uh, release here because of the, the agonist contraction on, uh, on, on the uh, you're getting a contraction on the agonist side, sending that neurological signal to release on the antagonist or hello, or um, the, the targeted muscle. Now the only problem with this is that for the leg to gain amplitude it tends to sort of rotate out. Hard to see that, eh? It tends to just naturally kind of roll out to gain that amplitude that we're looking for in our brain. Now, that's not a problem, except now I'm stretching the semimembranosus and semitendinosus because the legs rotated away and I'm exposing those hamstrings. So for me to maintain uh, the stretch of the uh, adductors, I'm going to internally rotate my thigh, which earns an internal rotation of my strap because as I'm assisting with my step, it helps maintain that internal rotation. Ready, and on my out breath, reaching, 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 and then that's my end range, and then one, two. Again, that light, one pound of pressure, one, two. And by the third one, I'm starting to gain a little bit more range. With the same assisted pressure and the same action, the same active pressure uh, of contraction, let's go for five. And so there you get a little bit more of a, uh, a dynamic view of with that gentle persuasion, the progress that we can make. Now, what I'm going to go back to the, the same stretch on the other side so I can explain something else. The problem with coming out is that, of course, we all start to roll around on the, uh, on the floor, the surface that we're on, whether you're on a, it should be a hard surface, by the way, whether you're on the floor or this lovely Cadillac or a massage table or your, your Eric's pad or whatever you've got, yoga pad, mat. Uh, to come out and keep your hips stabilized on the floor, I'm taking this unexercised leg, internally rotating it, opening up the hips in the back, and if I can, I'll hook on to the edge of the table here, and now, oh, I don't go quite as far, but I get a lot more intense stretch. Every once in a while, I'll do a stretch that I realize I should have done this before I demonstrated it because I'm really sore. I've been doing my kettlebell workouts, a lot of squatting and moving and opening, and they're kind of sore. But uh, normally, I have a better range of motion, but it's it's a good demonstration of real life because this is how um, how it's going to look when you do it. So, an internal rotation of the thigh, internal wrap of your rope or strap or uh, dish towel, whatever you end up with. Unexercised leg, internally rotated, try and hook onto something or just open it up a little bit so that when you come out, one, two, breath in, breath out, and assist. Whoops, <laughs> kind of went up off the a, a tangent. Whoa. Yeah, the leg comes up, it's not a problem, you're just getting to different adductors. So the higher up the thigh gets, the lower down into the gracilis you're going to get. So you can start here with brevis and pectineus and try and maintain that neutral leg for longus, magnus, and then just come up to get those magnus, longus, gracilis. So that's doable. All right. 
So now we've stretched these muscles, we can actually use them, I'll stick with the right leg, um, to open up. A lot of people I find will call this an IT band stretch, and I think by now 99% of the population knows that you can't stretch the IT band because it's like this steel band of fascia, but you can stretch the attachment points which are on the front or the TFL and glute max in the back. So to, to, to stretch those, you're contracting your adductors that you just opened and optimized. Now the problem is again here, to gain access, the leg wants to internally rotate, not a problem, but it, now you're stretching more the bicep of the, of the hamstrings. And to, un, to avoid that, I'm going to externally rotate my thigh, externally rotate my strap to maintain that external rotation of the thigh. Unexercised leg is going to come to midline, maybe a little bit across, and internally rotate, again opening up my thighs, uh, my pelvis in the back. And then here, I'm just leading with my heel across the midline, and then one, two, two, one, two. These are like the distal fibers, more of the glutes. If I come up a few degrees, like that's about 30 degrees, one, two. I'm starting to feel it more in the distal fibers of the glutes, the attachment of the glutes. Just the higher up I come, the more you'll feel in the back. So we've got internal rotation, internal wrap for the adductors, external, external rotation, external wrap of the strap for abductors, and yeah, that's it. And then from, from there, what I would tend to do is go into my glutes, the, the stretch that we did, I think, two days ago, three days ago, uh, getting into the glutes, glutes, and glutes. So. Okay, okay, let me take a look at these. Uh, hey, Tillman. And Jose Palomar, of all people, how honored to have you here. Thanks for watching. So anyway, um, yeah. Hand stuff. I'll post these again. They'll be on YouTube, and I'll repost the, the link from the YouTube back to this the, the Facebook channel and Instagram. Someone told me to put it on Instagram, so I will. And uh, just a, another little, you know, you can use anything to, to uh, as an assist. Um, this super high tech piece of braided rope, which costs like eight bucks for an eight foot length of rope. Somebody gifted me this Reebok thing like uh, 15 years ago, it still works. I used a bathrobe tie for about six months until it broke, but it was perfectly fine until it broke. Try avoiding stretching these kind of, even though it's a big heavy duty elastic, you're still, you're still stretching more of the elastic band than you are of the muscle. Uh, hey Don. Hmm. Let's see, I think that might about cover it. And tomorrow we'll get into uh, quads, and I think what I would like to do is go back from the gastrox into the ankle uh, and the muscles on either side of the ankle, the, the malleoli, and the muscles that wrap around those malleoli, malleoli and stabilize and strengthen and optimize the muscles that uh, allow us proper uh, stance and relationship to the ground. Um, so that will be tomorrow, foot, toes, arches, arching, or, uh, flexibility and strength for stabilization and the, and the confidence that we tend to sometimes lose, especially in wintertime when we're in clunky boots and the ground is really unstable. Um, that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Um, again, if you have some questions or you have concerns or you have requests, please uh, pop them up here and uh, let me know what you'd like to see. Um, and I'll do the best that I can. Oftentimes it's a situation that's been going on with you for a while and I would end up having to do that with you privately uh, because I need to get some, you know, so a little bit of history before I start trying to resolve, especially resolve over uh, the internet. Although it is doable and we've had some success with that in the last few days. Anyway, I hope everybody is safe and that you're all being, you know, conscientious and isolating and being good and later on I'll probably start doing, um, excuse me, um, painting and drawing and things that are keeping me busy besides just the stretching, just to sort of entertain. If it does any, nothing else, it might entertain you to watch me paint and draw. Uh, or maybe it'll inspire you to do things on your own. Um, but I hope that we can all work together to, to get through this horrible time. All right, so 
Peace out. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much for watching.